Here I have the latest family of M4 MacBook Pros. M4 Max is the 16 inch one. And then I have the M4 and the M4 Pro, but I forgot which one is which, so we're gonna have to find out through the testing. I thought it'd be a fun experiment. I also included my machine that I've been daily driving a lot for the past two years, my M2 Max MacBook Pro, just for comparison. This is what a brand new machine looks like. Nice and clean. And this is what a two-year-old machine looks like. Look at all those keys, they're all shaved down. Apple really should do something about that coating. It's not even oil on my fingers, it just looks like it. Besides that, I treat this thing pretty nicely, so it's in good shape. Now you've probably already seen some synthetic benchmark results, like Geekbench for example, at which the entire M4 family just crushes. Now I'll be doing some real world performance testing on these. Some code compilation, running interpreted code, and some initial machine learning tests so we can get an idea of what these chips are capable of. But I've also got a machine learning or AI deep dive video coming up, so don't miss that. Oh, and since I'm just dipping my toes into these machines, I figured this would be a good starting point for comparisons, but give it a week or two when I've had enough time with these machines to be able to really determine how they are in day-to-day -day tasks, and especially in my own software development workflows. Now, before I get into the tests, just a couple of housekeeping things, since I didn't do a dedicated unboxing video for the MacBook Pros like I did for the Mac Minis. I usually set these up using Migration Assistant, which is a really good way to get things up really quickly, because I need to install a lot of software. And as you know, these new machines use Thunderbolt 5. Well, the Pro and the Max do, but the M4 doesn't. That's still Thunderbolt 4. And I noticed a significant jump in transfer speed. And I just had to run iPerf right after that, sending packets from one machine to another. You set up a Thunderbolt bridge, system settings, network, and you'll have different networks here, like Wi-Fi. Thunderbolt bridge is the one you would set up here. But if you do this, make sure you configure your IP address manually. And then under hardware, since these support really fast transfer rates, you wanna make sure that you move this from standard to jumbo packets. And when I did that, I got much faster speeds that Thunderbolt 4 could provide. We got up to 66 gigabits per second, which is crazy to be able to transfer that fast between the machines. I've also set the M4 Pro and the M4 Max machines to high power mode when it's on battery, like right now, because I wanted to have the full performance benefits that that could give you. And that's how I've been using my M2 Max for the past two years with high performance mode. Does it have an effect on battery? Sure. But did I really notice it? No. I'll be doing a separate video for battery comparisons and trying my automated overnight test on that to see how that affects it. Oh, one thing I do want to mention is if you're getting the M4 model, not the Pro or the Max, then you're not going to have the option for high performance mode. You're only going to be able to set it to low performance mode when the battery is significantly low. So keep that in mind. One other thing we've seen through generations of these machines is the disk speed improved. So here we go. We've got uh, pretty good scores, around 6200 write, 5000 read. Now the M4 Max. Whoa, <laughs> 7,200 and almost 6,000. So better on this one. Interesting. I wonder if this machine is the M4 and it got lower SSD. And here is the last machine. Oh, this one is lower. Okay, this one's only going to 3300, right? And 2600 read. They all have very different numbers, but also they have different storage capacities. I went all out with the M4 Max because that's gonna be my machine for the next couple of years. And that one has four terabyte drive on it. This machine has a terabyte drive in it. And this machine has 512. So the 512 gigabyte machine is the slowest one, then the terabyte machine, and finally the four terabyte machine. I guess the bigger the drive, the faster they go. That's an interesting thing to know considering Apple charges you quite a lot for these upgrades. Maybe it's not just space that they're charging you for, maybe it's the different NAND chips that are on the SSDs that they're charging you extra for because they're faster. Here's my M2 Max from two years ago. This is what I've been using. It's about 3200 write, 5000 read. That's a two terabyte drive, by the way. So. What the heck is this? Well, typically I don't recommend working on a laptop outside in a bright day. First of all, the sun's gonna beat down on it, and heat it up. I made videos on how heat affects the performance of the machines before. But if you are outside and it's a cold day, let's say, you're still gonna be contending with the sun. And these new MacBooks have a higher brightness display at 600 nits, but they're supposed to boost up to a thousand if they detect really bright environment. Three new M4 MacBooks all have very close to the same kind of measurements right there. We've got a maximum of 567, that's on the max. And those can be just slight variations in the screen size and the tests. They're all within the same kind of range. This is pretty close to the 600 that's advertised. It's certainly higher than the 500, but the M2 Max is quite a bit lower than the 500 it's supposed to have. It's at 397. So significantly brighter displays on these new machines. Now let's simulate some light 
light hitting the sensors and see if we get a difference there. I don't know if it's just not a powerful light, but we didn't get much difference. All right, let's try the brightest light I have. <laughs> Definitely can't see the screen here. <laughs> okay, 75%. I can see the screen pretty well. And 100%. What? Whoa, there we go. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that, 935 nits. How did I do it? There is a setting here that says automatically adjust brightness. If that's not on, it's not going to do it. It's not even gonna let you drag the slider to get that extra oomph of brightness, unless this is set to automatically adjust. Now we're gonna start building some code. It's about time, right? Since we're dealing with all Macs here, the best ecosystem to write Mac OS apps is Xcode. We're gonna build two projects. One project has a lot of dependencies. It's called Xcode Benchmark, and I've ran it on the channel before. This is a test that includes over 70 popular CocoaPods as dependencies. So it's a pretty decent sized build. There's C++, there's Swift, there's C, there's Objective-C, Markdown, JSON. It's a pretty large project. Most projects are gonna be smaller than this one. So this one takes a little bit of time to build. And of course, I've got my little friend here to help us out. Even though this test does give us the time at the end, it's still more fun to use this one. I wanna say its name, but I've had my videos flagged for saying his name. So if you know the name, put it down in the comments below. We're ready to go here. When I push that button, these are all gonna get kicked off at the same time. And let's go. <laughs> here we go. Let the building commence. Now we're also trying to figure out which one of these is the M4 and which one is the M4 Pro. The M4 Pro should be faster because it's got more cores. This is a multi-core build. So this might be a dead giveaway. If you have any guesses so far, you can put it down below. Now the temperatures are holding steady. 58 degrees on that one, 47 on the big guy. Of course, the 16 inch is gonna spread heat a lot better than the 14 inch machines. 58 on the other 14 inch, 61 now 84 over here on the m2 max whoa m2 max jumped up to 91 while the other ones are still staying kind of cool especially that uh, 16 inch m4 max i'm starting to hear the fans kick in which machine is it the m4 max is making noise <laughs> and it's done wow it's the first one to finish at 81 seconds oh wow let's take a look at the temperature while we still have it nice and toasty here we're up to 38 degrees during this test the machine to the left oh it's at 45 degrees See, that's, that's pretty good for that 16 inch. Slightly different profile here on this last machine. Uh-oh, uh-oh, does this one only have one fan? 43 degrees on this one, 45. So notice this 14 inch has two hotspots and this 14 inch all the way on the right has one hotspot. I think we know which machine is which and how many fans it has. So both of those machines, the 14 inches got way more hot than the 16 inch, but the 16 inch kicked off its fans a lot sooner. And we have numbers, folks. Now the M2 Max machine got 127 seconds in this test. We got 94.9 seconds on this 14 inch, the middle 14 inch machine, 81 seconds on the M4 Max, and 141 seconds on this one on the right. So I'm gonna call it, that's the M4, and this is the M4 Pro. So the M2 Max is faster at multi-core stuff than the M4 machine, but it has a lot more cores. So that's understandable. This is a multi-core operation. So if we weren't doing multi-core, if we were doing single core things like JavaScript, for example, it's kind of hard to get a pure single core operation these days. But a lot of times when you're running a front end process like a web framework, think Angular, React, Vue, Svelte, Solid, things like that, that's going to be a one core operation. For one core operation, we have a test called Speedometer that does a pretty good job. I'm going to start that test right now. What this is, is just front end JavaScript frameworks and doing to-do lists, adding items, subtract items showing graphs and things like that. Wow, okay, the highest score that I've gotten so far, we haven't cracked 50 yet, but 49.1 on the M4 Max, 45.7 on the M4 Pro, we're gonna call it that, and 47.4, which is higher than the M4 Pro on the M4 model. But notice they're all very close, like within the margin of error. So we're talking about one core and these have that one nice M4 core. They all have the same kind of core, they just have different amounts of them. And the M2 got a Pretty decent score, 40.8. All right, for this next test, we don't need you. I'll be back. Yeah, yeah. This other test is a web-based test, but it's called Jetstream 2, and it's more than JavaScript. This has WASM, TypeScript, and it tests a bunch of other things like regular expressions and Uglify, just a bunch of different web application libraries. Some of them are single core, and some of them use multi-core libraries under the hood, which is why we're gonna see some slightly different results between the M4 Pro and the M4. So let's start off with the M2, which got a score of 370 
1979. Pretty good for when it was back then. We got 497 for the M4 Pro, which is quite different than the M4. 475, that's the test variants, but also it's a big enough score difference that I would say some of the multi-core operations in there had a role in it. And we got 504 for Jetstream 2 on the M4 Max, the highest score I've ever seen. So it's lunchtime, I'm gonna go eat lunch because this build is gonna take forever to build. I remember it taking about six hours on my MacBook Air from 2015, and it is huge. This is of course WebKit, basically Safari browser. It's not gonna take that long on these machines, and it's gonna take you a second. This is how we build it. I'm not gonna do the M2 Max because I've already done that many times in the channel before. What this will tell you is if you have a really huge, huge build, how long is it gonna take you daily and how many seconds is it gonna help you save every day? Eventually, you'll be able to add that up and take a vacation. All right, this is intense. I just had to take a look at this because the M4 Max is going nuts. Look at those fans, 5,000 RPM, and it's getting pretty toasty. Actually, it's not. It's 65 degrees and holding, but the fans are going crazy. This build goes in waves and I've never seen the fans spin up this high 7200 rpm 7900 rpm on fan 2 that's tg pro by the way that's how I can see the temperatures and the fans it is loud and warm in here but I gotta say fans are doing an incredible job they're much louder than in previous generations I mean I can tell that right now just from standing here and listening to it but this build is not going over 80 degrees so it looks like it's very important for Apple to keep these new machines cool and not exceed certain temperatures that they were allowed to exceed before. I wonder what the M4 MacBook Airs are gonna look like, because those don't have fans. Now the M4 computer is not doing the same thing. The fan is low and the temperatures are pretty low. I'm also expecting that machine to come in last by far. And this makes me think that the M4 is significantly different than the M4 Pro and the M4 Max, because they had to shove the M4 in the iPad first, which doesn't have a fan either. Interesting, I wanna see the results here, but I'm gonna finish my sandwich. Okay, we got some results, folks, and yeah, that M4 took a long time. If you have to build this project a lot, you're gonna get that vacation sooner if you get the M4 Max, because we got 40 minutes on the M4 to build this project. M4 Pro, actually not bad, 24 minutes. This is the 14 core variety. I'll list the machines that I'm using down in the description, by the way, just below the like button. And uh, the M4 Max, 17 minutes minutes wow told you this was a big one just as a side note uh thanks to the members of the channel i bought the, all these machines myself nobody sent them to me and members like you help support the channel there's a join button down below too if you want to become a member you're welcome to you get extra videos and and you get to have badges by your name and you can use special emojis just a quick battery check while we're here i started all these machines the m4s at a hundred percent we're down to 28 percent on the m4 pro we're down to 44 percent percent on the M4 Mac and 36% on the M4. The 16 inch version does have a bigger battery though. Let's move on and do a little bit of torture. We're gonna do something called the Mandelbrot test. And I've done this on the channel many times before. Those of you that are not new know about this. This is a Python program. So this time not compiled, we've done compiled. Now it's interpreted. And this program is designed to utilize all the cores all at the same time, just max them all out, go really hard. And we're gonna take a look at that and how that affects the performance. Of course, since this is a multi-core test the machines with more cores are going to win so you can kind of expect that but what i'm curious about is to see how the m4 versus the m2 max perform because they have the same number of cores also the m4 pro it's got 14 cores and i think it should beat the 12 core m2 max but let's see i tested a lot of machines on this channel using this particular test exact same test on windows and on Macs. so you can go back and check those out those times if you're interested in that as well all right here we go and boom <laughs> they're all running, excellent. Now while they're running, take a look at this. Here is activity monitor and specifically the history chart for the CPUs. Look at that. Wow, you're done already? Come on. <laughs> By the way, I didn't write this program. This is from Benchmark's game website. 16,000 is the parameter that they specify that I use. Anyway, you can see that green spike walking across the screen. That's when this program was running. So it wasn't that long. It's 17 seconds on the M4 Pro, 14.6 seconds on the M4 Max, 29 seconds 
on the M4 and the M2 Max beats the M4 26.99. I bet you can pick up an M2 Max machine right now for the same price that you can get the M4. Let's do a quick preview of machine learning here. I do have a video coming up with more detailed tests on machine learning, specifically around the new M4 Max and how powerful it is and also running a cluster of machines as well. So stay tuned for those videos. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss them. But for now, I just want to see tokens per second using Olama. Olama is running. It's the latest version and we're going to run Llama 3.2. Write a 1000 word story and go. That's the M4 Max, of course. During the live stream, if you came to that the other day, this got 107. Let's see if we can beat it. Huh? 107. <laughs> Same score. 107 tokens per second, which is really nice. Of course, it is a small model. Llama 3.2, 2 billion parameter model. It's not that big. And if you do this kind of thing, then you know that the larger the model in parameter count, 13 billion, 35 5 billion, 70 billion, the more parameters, the slower the output. Sometimes you run quantized versions of that. And you might have heard terms like F16, which means uh, 16 floating point, and then there's eight, four int, which are integer quantizations. Basically, quantization reduces the precision of models weights. So to go from F16 to four, for example, the model would become a lot smaller, so we can fit on machines with less RAM. It'll run faster, but you're sacrificing a little bit of performance and accuracy. It all depends on the model too. All right, here they are, right? 1,000 word stories. This one is not going that fast. The M4. We got 68 tokens per second on the M4 Pro. Quite a big difference from the M4 Max. And what has a huge effect on this is memory bandwidth. The Max chips usually have twice the memory bandwidth than the Pro chips do. It's not exactly like that, but it's close. So we got 68 here. We've got 39 tokens per second on the M4. 82 tokens per second on the M2 Max, that Max chip. So the M4 chip is pretty good at developer tasks, basic developer tasks. The pro chip will get most developers, I'd say probably 90% of developers to where they need to be. And the max chip is really good for those people that are going to be doing lots of data, lots of number crunching that need a lot of throughput, especially machine learning people. Not too long ago, I did a video specifically related to memory bandwidth on max. Check it out right over here and I'll see you very soon.